Heidi's had a profound impact on the, not just the venture industry, but the overall technology and entrepreneurial ecosystem. She was the first one who really started bringing awareness to unconscious bias. She breaks the mold of what people think of as a typical venture capitalist. She's been a CEO of a startup. She's been an executive at a large company. She's been a venture investor. She's been a teacher. She's been a board member at companies of every uh, scale and stage. She has the gravitas, the intellectual stamina, the intellectual capability. She brings a lot to the table. And so people are coming to her table versus her trying to find other people's tables. I wouldn't be where I am now if it weren't for Heidi. There's a story about the girl walking along the beach and there's a ton of starfish washed up on the beach. And she's walking along and she's picking up starfish and she's throwing them in the water. And somebody comes up to her and says, you know, little girl, don't you realize what a fruitless task this is? There are, there are millions of starfish on the beach. You can't, it, what does this matter? And as she picks one up, one up and she throws it in the water, she says, well, it mattered to that starfish. One of the things I realized when I was growing up is that education was very important. My father did not have a college degree. My mother only went through eighth grade. And my parents got divorced when I was about 10. And my mother had a really hard time making ends meet. I really pushed myself to excel in education because I thought that's my ticket out. She's done many, many hard things. When she was going to college for a short time, she and her mother were living in a hotel. There were not other Stanford students living down the street in a hotel. And somehow as a teenager, a child, instead of feeling vulnerable and having the toughness of character, like I have one person to depend upon and that's me, Heidi. I went through the dot-com bust, I got divorced. I've, I've had, you know, bad things happen to me in my life. And if there is one word that I think most of my friends and particularly my friends during my entrepreneurial days would say about me is that I have a lot of tenacity. And to me, tenacity just really means that you're gonna get back up again. But that means you fell, right? <laughs> you don't have to have tenacity if everything goes well all the time. You have to have tenacity when things don't go well all the time. Heidi is one of the few who actually, uh, going back all the way to the 80s, was one of the first female CEO founders that was backed uh, by a venture firm. A female CEO of a software company in 1983, I think there were three of us, maybe worldwide. I certainly had had many times when doors were shut in my face, I think because I was a woman. But uh, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, a door gets shut in your face, you just go knock on the next one. The reason why Heidi is so well known and why so many professional women seek her out is the Heidi Howard case study, the Harvard case study. I was written up in uh, USA Today in 1997 as being a master networker. Uh, it was a slow news day that day and so they, they wrote this article about me and um, the Harvard professor saw it and called me and she said, I want to do a case about building a business network. Can you be my subject? A number of years ago, this other professor took the same case but all he did was change the name from Heidi to Howard. People got either Heidi or Howard's resume and decided whether they liked the person. And as you recall, people thought Howard was very effective, but Heidi was not. It's a sad statement that um, you can read identical material, but if you think it's a woman, you see her as being less likable than if it's a man. This was something that gave us the encouragement that we realized it was an issue, that she had managed to get through it, and that there were paths of success, even against those odds. Uh. Heidi is certainly a trailblazer. She's uh, started a, a company in the 80s and sold it and has been a venture capitalist and a successful one. And I've had so many lucky breaks in my life. And one of my really lucky breaks was meeting a woman by the name of Ann Winblad. She became one of the first women to raise, uh, be a founding partner of a venture fund. So she raised Hummer Winblad Venture Partners. And I was their very first deal. I was the novice venture capitalist. 
and she was the young CEO, and we learned a lot from each other. And she really was a role model for me, in addition to being a great friend, also a role model about how to be a great venture capitalist. So, you know, a decade later, it was my turn to join the VC ranks. So not only has she been a trailblazer in terms of paving the way for female entrepreneurs, she's now jumped to the other side and she's really been a trailblazer for female venture capitalists like myself who are up and coming and look to women like Heidi as role models and idols. Venture is a, is a very male dominated industry. When I was out raising money, it was virtually unheard of to have a woman VC, but it is changing. We have to work at changing it. In an industry, particularly for women, but in general, it's, it can be a hard one to break into and a hard one to navigate. And I think if you went and spoke to almost every single woman who has had some level of success at some point in their career, they came across Heidi. Heidi operates at the level of supporting women. All the one-on-one -on -one walks she's taken women on, you know, all the calls she takes with women. She really taught me it's not, it's not okay for me to just go to work and then go home to my family and just socialize with people at my company. I needed to build that broader network and to be helping lots of other people. If I can turn on the lights for 10 other people like me and they all go do it and then they turn on 10 more and they turn on 10 more, before you know it, all those starfish will be back in the ocean. She is very much someone that has worked for everything that she has. To watch her then not just sit on her laurels, but to give back so actively. For example, teaching at Stanford, where she's taught, I think it's not an exaggeration to say, hundreds of aspiring entrepreneurs and students. Before grad school, I didn't even know venture capital or entrepreneur what that really was. I am now a VC at Bessemer, uh, another venture capital firm down the street. So she has totally changed uh, my career trajectory. One of my favorite quotes about teaching is, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. And Heidi embodies that. She is real. You get the same Heidi if she's talking to someone who's very high placed in an organization to a student. She's one of the most authentic people I've ever met. Heidi's personality of just being a people person, but being herself, sharing about her family, sharing about her work. That's something I'm constantly striving to do and constantly the, the person I'm trying to be. One of the Heidiisms that has always stuck with me, she says this in your 30s, you care about what other people think. In your 40s, you stop caring about what other people think. In your 50s, you realize they weren't really thinking about you at all. <laughs> And she, I think that's one of the things that she says things like that, which is, look, I went through, you know, everybody goes through these phases where you're looking for this external validation, and then you suddenly start to, you know, get more of this internal compass of what matters, and then you realize that that's actually all that matters. Um, that's all we can really do, is because the most important person that we're living for is ourselves. Also, you know, Heidi's fun. I have many cones of silences with Heidi, of much fun we've had, which I cannot describe to, with a microphone around my neck or a cameraman in front of me. Uh, we've all said many times that, you know, once we both get to retirement, we'll write the book. The word balance is, is, is unachievable, but you've got to find a way to live your life uh, when you have a strong professional career, and Heidi's done that. When I was in my early 30s, I got invited to an event that was at Heidi's home. You had the top executives from Silicon Valley. You had it as this, like people dress very well, um, and Heidi is hosting, and then her children come in. And this was when they were younger, and they're just walking around, and she's on the couch and like introducing them to people and, and, and snuggling with one of them, and then putting them to bed and coming back. Um, and I don't even know if she would remember it, but to me, that was just such an important memory of me seeing. I think we, people always talk about like balance or how do you make these trade-offs. And it was one of the first times I saw just such a successful woman integrate. I think a lot of people that know Heidi would know that she's been an accomplished venture capitalist or uh, ran developer relations for Steve Jobs. 
uh, at Apple, or that she was famous for throwing some of the best parties uh, in Silicon Valley for many years uh, at her house called the Casbah. What they may not know is that she has also in the last couple of years become a very accomplished glass worker, uh, building a home studio where she produces the most amazing pieces of fused glass art. Having that as an outlet outside of all the other things that she's certainly doing, she still has time to go home and make art and it's her kind of where she can be a free spirit and a creative soul. And I think that's just so cool. Happiness isn't so much that rush of like, oh my God, I'm so happy right now, I'm ecstatic. Like, woo, yay me. It's really more that sense of just being at peace with who you are and where you are. I think for me, it is those moments where you can just kind of sit down and say, it was a good day, did some good things feel really good about life, you know, that's a pretty, and that's a pretty tree, and look at how nice this piece of glass just came out. IPOs feel good, selling companies feels good. Those are very transactional. You know, you have it that moment, and the next moment, you already had it, right? Finding happiness in accomplishing small things probably means you're gonna have more happy moments in your life. My mission is to be a positive contributor to the lives and the missions of others. And if in every interaction I can be true and authentic and also make the other side of that equation better off, then I will consider it a life well lived. Someday we will both break the cone of silence and tell you all the fun stories. Great. Um, Tell us one fun story. No. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. No.